There's one more thing we need to understand before we start to look at the other quadrants of the unit circle, and that is the signs on the unit circle. And by signs, I mean pluses and minuses. So there's this is a little chart to help you remember this. Um, my pre-calculus teacher taught me this, and she taught me this little memory trick is all students take calculus. Just a little way to remember what letters go in which quadrants, and we start in quadrant one and work our way around. All students take calculus. Now let's talk about what these letters mean. That A means that in the first quadrant, all trig functions are positive. That means sine, cosine, and tangent. They're all positive. The S means that in this quadrant, only the sine is positive. The cosine and the tangent are both negative. Now, this should make sense because we know that cosine is the x value. In this quadrant, x is negative. And in this quadrant, sine is positive, or y value is positive. In quadrant 3, the tangent is positive. This should make sense because we know in quadrant 3, both the x and the y are negative, so that means sine and cosine are both negative, so that would turn the tangent into positive. And the last quadrant, quadrant 4, we get that cosine is positive. That should make sense because cosine is the x value. In this quadrant, the x's are positive. The y's are what's negative. So this is a little memory trick to help you know what the signs are in each quadrant. And the beauty of this is, is that for the unit circle, the points will all be the same. They'll all be special right triangles. All you have to do is add the right signs based on what quadrant they're in. So to practice this all students take calculus signage stuff, let's do a problem about the Pythagorean identity. Now, this right here is the Pythagorean identity. There we go. Now let's briefly talk about why it's called the Pythagorean identity. And to do that, let's go back to the start up here. I'm going to zoom in on this triangle that we did earlier. Now, we know at this point that x is the same thing as cosine, and y is the same thing as sine. Now, Look at if you do the Pythagorean theorem on this triangle. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1 squared. That's why it's called the Pythagorean identity. It's just the Pythagorean theorem, but done on a Sokotoa right triangle. That's all that it is. So now that we understand that, Let's go back to the Pythagorean identity. You will need to memorize this one and start to talk about how we apply it. So in example 3a, we have an angle. This angle is in quadrant 2. And we know that the sine of this angle is 3 fifths. And we want to find the cosine. That's what we want to do. Well, we can use the Pythagorean identity to do this. Now, before we do it, one thing I would like you to note in your notes is that cosine squared of theta is exactly the same thing as that, putting the squared on the outside with parentheses. These two things are completely interchangeable. They're exactly identical. I think the reason that mathematicians have done this is they didn't want to write so many parentheses all the time, so they put the squared inside and said we don't have to write them. I think it's just a laziness thing. But note that these are exactly the same. So I am actually going to rewrite the Pythagorean, then Pythagorean identity with the parentheses version. And I'm going to come in here to sign and plug in three-fifths as my sine value because that's what the problem said sine was. So if I go to simplify this, this becomes nine twenty-fifths 
minus 9 25ths. I get cosine of theta squared gives me 16 25ths. Square root both sides to get cosine alone. And I get cosine of theta equals, now don't forget, because we square rooted, we do have plus or minus, and that square root simplifies to 4 fifths. So we get that the cosine is plus or minus 4 fifths. However, only one of these is correct. It is either positive 4 fifths or it is negative 4 fifths. And that is where this little piece of information comes in. We know that our angle is in quadrant 2. So if I do all students take calculus, I'm in quadrant 2. So we know from the S that in quadrant 2, sine is positive, which means all the other ones are negative. So that means that this cosine value needs to be a negative 4 fifths because it's in quadrant 2. And that's how we use the Pythagorean identity. Now what I would like you to do is pause the video and try B. So this time you know your angle is between pi and 3 pi halves. You know that the cosine is this fraction here. And this time you are solving for the sine. So put it into the Pythagorean identity, solve for the plus or minus, and then figure out which plus or minus to use based on what quadrant it's in. Pause the video now and try that out on your own. So I started by plugging everything into the Pythagorean identity. I got sine is plus or minus 2 over square root of 5. Just so you know, plus, uh, 2 over square root of 5 is the same thing as square root of 4 fifths. It is also the same thing as 2 square root of 5 over 5. So any of those that you got are actually identical. Now, I know this is in the third quadrant from pi to 3 pi half, so that's here, which means tangent is positive, everything else is negative, so I pick the negative one. Last one. Try this one as our last problem for using the Pythagorean identity. Once again, set it all up, knowing that our sine value is 1, and you are solving for the cosine value. Then come back and check your work. Plugged it in, and I pretty quickly got that cosine is going to equal 0. Notice that this one didn't give you a quadrant to look at. That's because this is a quadrantal angle. Hopefully you'll notice that as you are looking. So if we know the sine value is 1, that is the exact same thing as saying on the unit circle, the y value is 1. And there is only one spot on the unit circle where the y value is 1, and it's right there, where the x value is 0 and the y value is 1. So that's why when we solved it out, we got that cosine is 0, and we didn't know which quadrant it's in, because it looks like that. So now that we've practiced with our Pythagorean identity, in the next video, we're going to play more with that idea of expanding the unit circle to look at the other quadrants.